Um, thanks, everybody. So my name is Hao Fei Yu. I'm an assistant professor of environmental engineering at UCF. So today I'm going to briefly go over my research agenda, but I want to spend a little bit more time on an ongoing National Science Foundation project we have at UCF. It's a smart and trustworthy air quality modeling network. We call it the STAIR. So it would be good that at, we, can, we, we end up with, uh, with a man. Okay. All right, so uh, first a little bit about my background. So uh, I have an interdisciplinary background. My master is in environmental engineering from China. I have a PhD in environmental health from USF. My postdoc training is in the atmospheric sciences at Pacific Northwest National Lab and environmental engineering at Georgia Tech. So my research focus focused on three main themes. The first one, ambient environment. I use a traditional instrument. I also use uh, when the focus on low cost air quality sensor networks. So <clears throat> I also run air quality models. I run a variety of different models, including emission model, uh, dispersion model, which is traditionally being used in consulting environment, and advanced chemical transport models and the source pressurement models. I also do air pollution impact assessment now when the focus on the policy impact, environment and health impact different air pollution control policies also uh, involve air pollution health studies, essentially trying to de determine uh, what is the uh, impact air explored air pollution and different health outcomes. I do teach four courses at UCF currently, uh, including both undergrad and the graduate level courses. All right, so the, this is the first topic I'm hoping to spend a little bit more time on this. Uh, this is the ongoing NSF project at UCF. And uh, our team consists of five different faculties from uh, uh, environmental engineering, computer science, electrical engineering, and public admin. So this project, we just started in last October, but uh, we have been working on this for over um, about three years already. So the reason why we want to do this is that uh, um, existing air quality regula regulatory monitoring network is just too expensive and too sparse. And, uh, and one example would be for the Metro Orlando region, which consists, uh, which has a population of over 2 million, you only have four stations operational in this region, which is far less than enough. So that's why we want to do this. We want to design and deploy about this low cost monitor, which costs about $500 per node, but we want to develop, uh, deploy about 100 nodes and scatter around Orlando. And, but we want to make this thing, even if it's low cost, but we want to make sure it's trustworthy, data is reliable. And uh, on the upper right corner, you'll be able to see this. Uh, this is the um, uh, monitor we are developing. And you, you see this the exploded view of the monitor what's inside it. Uh, and also you have a photo of the uh, monitor we are still testing. It's a prototype monitor, it's still uh, testing at Orlando. And uh, we, uh, we, we, uh, the test results is quite good actually. And we hope to start deploying them on UCF campus. You should be able to see them popping up on light posts in the next few weeks or so. And uh, so the, the monitor itself is self-contained. It's powered by solar panel. You don't need to plug in anything. You just need to, um, you know, you have a two, two host clamps that you can tell. Just click on a light post, that's about it and do start the operating and, you, and it will actually send data to our centralized server. So I also hope to, to highlight a little bit unique features of our monitor network. So, <clears throat> so there are like several existing networks or uh, commercial networks in, in the United States. What's unique ab about our project and our monitor is we actually focus on four different aspects. The first one is uh, we want to make sure the data quality collected from our monitor is reliable. Um, that's why in the background, in the back end, we run different air quality models and we simulate, you know, if you deploy a monitor to an environment, we simulate what the environment going to be, how the low cost component, the sensor respond to the environment. We simulate the behavior of the monitor so we can remotely calibrate that thing. So you don't have to carry the heavy equipment to the location, which is a huge burden if you're talking about big network. And we actually implement hardware and software combined together. We implement the almost near real time um, you know, algorithm. We are able to um, detect the sensor drift and correct them. And we will to detect malfunctioning. If we detect malfunctioning, it when the monitor will notify our centralized server so we can know we can send someone to repair it. 
we also focus on cybersecurity, and uh, uh, we have hardware and software in encryption on monitor, so we make sure the data is, is trustworthy. So it's the reason why we do this is if you were to use a monitor in regulatory settings, there is a strong incentive for those polluters to actually mess around with the monitor to, to make sure that their pollution in, um, behavior was not detected. Um, we also, uh, we plan to actually to implement a machine learning method, two-stage machine learning method, because our monitor collects pollution concentration data at up to one hertz. If you have a hundred of this, you have a huge amount of pollution measurement data. What we are hoping to do is we hope to use a machine learning method. We can dig up all the internal internal uh, trend. We bury the wind in that huge amount of data. We can we hope to use this in air quality forecasting. And uh, the data is, you, if you have a large scale network with unperceived amount of data, this, this can only enable this air quality forecasting based on data. So finally, we are working with the government, the city of Orlando, and also our local regulatory agencies, the Environment Protection Divisions. And we have a four stage um, you know, framework, which we gradually release the data to the public. And uh, we, the reason why we want to do this, we want to in facilitate the communication between the uh, community uh, impact of air pollution and to facilitate the communication with the government and regulatory agencies and to enable, to enhance the trust in their governance. So this, uh, this uh, project just started in uh, October and we're happy, you know, to, if you willing to, if you want to collaborate and if you find this uh, project will be uh, very helpful for what you're doing, we are more than happy uh, to help. Um, you know, you can find my contact information. You can contact any one of us in the team and there is a the website is provided in there. Again, this project is funded by National Science Foundation or CPS Media, um, pro, CPS Media one, okay. So then, so the so next one is um, I want to. So second theme, what I'm doing is um, um, is actually on air quality modeling. So this is uh, we, I run a bunch of different models. Well, you know, on the upper right corner is uh, daily PM concentration simulated by 14 different methods. It's 14 different models um, in in the Atlanta region. So. And the reason why the reason why I do this is we want to answer some uh, critical questions related to air pollution. Well, what, what we want to know is how much pollution coming from different sources. For example, we know vehicles contribute air pollution. How much, right? And we know trees contribute air pollution because they emit isoprene. The thing is, how much? You know, where they come from? How much come from? And we want to know how much quantitatively they contribute to the combined concentration pollution. And how can we design master control policies to actually effectively at the at the most efficient way to control air pollution while you know do not pose such economic burden on the economy. And um, <clears throat> the final theme what I'm doing is it's pollution and impact assessment. What I do is is um, I. Um, you know, I, I participate in air pollution health study. What the question we want to know is that, okay, if you're exposed to air pollution, you know, does this exposure increase your chance of certain illnesses? For example, asthma, lung cancer, emergency room visits, uh, COPD, DD, things like this. And uh, I basically, what I do is I, I simulate the pollution concentration and combine with some um, statistical method and health records to investigate the potential associations. Finally, the, uh, an important component of my agenda is uh, on human mobility and exposures. This is a relatively new area. What I do here is that we know human move all the time. And uh, because of this, humans are in, exposed to air pollution at different locations. In the past, it's hard to account for this, but now we have data. We have a large amount of data, human mobility movement data. You know, we can have population level, for example, cell phone location, like CDR data, and we have individual level data. For example, one, one figure showing here is Google Maps data. What I do is, I just invite how, how this data can be helpful in air pollution health study. How can we track entire population or just some individuals to better estimate their exposure to air pollution? And how can we use this information to to better you know, control the health impact air pollution. But as you can clearly tell, there are some uh, currently unanswered questions. One example would be privacy. How do we balance privacy when it's collecting personal data and tracking people with research? And this question is still largely unanswered. 
So for the future, for the near term, of course, I want to complete the stair network, which we are building, currently building. And I want to hope to, uh, to, uh, to explore further on how human mobility impacts environmental regulations. And long term wise, I was hoping that we can um, expand our stair network to make a smart, connected sustainability monitor network for the entire city. Um, it, it's, it's a huge effort, but it to be huge helpful because hugely helpful because it will collect a lot of data, and this is uh, going to be quite useful if you want to to develop some big data driven, data informed sustainable planning for the for entire city for smart city. So. Finally, I would like to, of course, acknowledge my founders, including National Science Foundation, Electrical Power Research Institute, and uh, um, especially my current former group members and collaborators. And finally, a huge thanks for the continuous support from our department um, in civil environmental and construction engineering, our college CECS, a faculty cluster, a cluster initiative, because one member is uh, in, it's, it's a one of the rises cluster, and uh, the, cl the cluster has provided much tremendous help. And finally, at UCF. Right. Thanks. Thank you, Al.